Hello, hello everyone, my name is Laura, this is my channel, Laura's Little Library, and welcome to today's video, which are my spring recommendations. So spring is right around the corner, aka I'm pretty sure tomorrow is actually the first day of spring, but hopefully soon we will be experiencing weather that feels a little more like spring. So in the spirit of it being now the spring season, I will be sharing with you some of my spring recommendation reads. So for me, recommending books on the season as well as creating TBRs on the season, which I have already created my spring TBR, so if you're interested, I'll have that linked above, so you can go ahead and click on it if you're interested. I always use very specific themes devoted to each season for both my TBRs and my recommendations. And so for me, for spring, it's very natural. So a lot of like nature magic or flowery writing and storytelling. It's also a really good season for me, I think, to do like retellings or mythology, just anything that's, you know, bright colors, warm sunshine, grass peeking up out of the winter and so anything that kind of gives me that vibe or that feel. So without further ado, let's get started. So I do have one middle grade that I do want to recommend because it does seem like a very spring middle grade and it is March and so it's for middle grade March. But that book is The Other Side of Luck by Ginger Johnson. So this is an adorable middle grade where you are following kind of two POVs. You have your princess whose mother recently passed away and they are very sad that the queen is gone. And her father basically says, hey, anyone who can find this magical flower that reminds us of the queen, this very specific magical flower, can get like some big reward. Um, but the princess isn't super thrilled because she doesn't feel like anybody else who really knew her mother like she did. So she goes off and she's trying to find the specific smell of her mother. She's very into fragrances and smells. And so she goes off and she is trying to find the true flower for her mother. And then you also have a boy whose father has been wrongly accused of a crime. And he just kind of goes to find this flower to try and free his father. And he stumbles along with the princess and they team up and it's cute, but it's middle grade. So it's all about finding this flower and it was very spring, it was very nice. And so here's a spring middle grade for you if you're doing middle grade March. Now I do think spring is also a great time for some contemporary, especially contemporary romance. So I will have a couple of those to recommend here and now. So the first one is going to be Weather Girl. The reason this seems so springy is because it talks a lot about the weather and the climate and especially rain, like obviously with the cover, seems very rainy and here where I live, it, there's so much rain during the spring, so it seems very in tune and so it's just adorable romance of this weather girl who's really just trying to make it. She ended up working for her heroes but her heroes aren't super great. In fact, her bosses are actually divorced and they fight a lot in the office. And so she ends up teaming up with this teddy bear of a guy from the sports area to try and get their bosses back together. And in the meantime, they may or may not fall in love while trying to get other people to fall in love. An adorable, light, fluffy romance. Uh, with weather and it was just such a unique like workspace to read from so I would definitely recommend this one or I would also recommend Tokyo Ever After by Miko Jean. I will not stop recommending this book, okay? It just Okay, maybe this will be the last year that I recommend it for spring, but um The sequel has come out called Tokyo Dreaming and I have not yet read it, but it is like the covers, the covers are just beautiful and brightly colored, which makes me think of spring. It's basically Princess Diaries, but meets crazy rich Asians in Japan. So we have our uh, Japanese American girl who finds out that she's actually the daughter of the crown prince of Japan. And so she decides to go to Japan, meet her family, see what her life, life would have been like had she grown up in Japan as a part of this family rather than in the States with her mom. 
and uh, it's a bodyguard romance and it's really cute. I'm really excited to read the second book. I've heard it might not be as great as the first one, but I'm still really excited for it. And like the cover, just the fact that it's green and then with the pink flowers, oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. So last time I recommend this one. If you have, if you've been watching my channel and you haven't read this book, please just do it already. <laughs> like I ended up finishing this book really quickly and I did an impromptu reading vlog for it. So <laughs> that if that tells you anything, <laughs> it should tell you to read it. So now I'm going to get into the fantasy side of things because I am mostly a fantasy reader and I think fantasy is another great um, genre to read in the spring because it's it feels very magical and lots of creation elements. So let's start off with your regular good old fashioned fantasy. If you are looking for a series, a completed series, it's a four book series, I recommend Three Dark Crowns. I love this series and for some reason it just seems very fitting to spring which i don't really have a good reason for why it seems very springy i think another thing that theme that seems within the theme of spring is like poison <laughs> and assassinations through poison and that is one of the mythical factions within this world so basically you've got these three sisters who are all kind of fighting for the crown and they have different gifts. So one's gift is poison tolerance, another is speaking with animals and having a familiar, and the other is elemental magic. And so when they turn of age, they have this huge like celebration competition of to kill the other two queens and take your rightful place in the kingdom. I just, I think it's the poison and just the magic in competition. I don't know exactly, but that, it just seemed, it was a really good series to read in spring, so. Speaking of poison, I have another book to recommend to you that is poisonous-ish. However, I will warn you that it is a series or a duology and the second book is coming out later this year. And that is Belladonna. So Belladonna came out last year, I believe, and Foxglove is coming out this year and I'm really excited for it so our main character kind of gets bounced around from place to place, house to house, because whoever kind of in her family that takes care of her is hoping to inherit her money and the land and everything that her parents are leaving her. So she is going to be super rich once she becomes of age, once she becomes an adult. So all these family members want to take advantage of that. However, she finds that she can actually ingest poisonous belladonna berries and instead of dying she actually meets with death and chills like she just she can talk with him I uh, have a conversation you know she's a very hard person to kill basically so again the strong themes of poison and there are lots of florals on the cover which yeah any book with florals on the cover I'm gonna try and read during spring so I very much enjoyed this book I thought it was amazingly done so I would highly recommend this one as well. Now let's get into the very fairy tale storytelling style of book. So I would definitely, if you're interested in stories, storytelling, anything kind of classically, I don't know, beautiful, I guess, I would definitely read Once Upon a Broken Heart by Stephanie Garber. If you haven't started this series already, definitely consider picking this up. So I read the Carvel trilogy and I loved it, but this is something separate. Again, it is a series and it is not yet done, but the first two books are out and I have read them both and I have loved them both. So this has a lot of glamorous like falls and falling in love with fates that you're not supposed to. And just, it's a, it feels like a fairy tale breath of life. You know, like you just kind of breathe it in and it, feels good in your lungs and you just are happy reading about it. You have Evangeline Fox, who you are, who's a wonderful main character and she is dealing with Jax, who is one of the fates and he is a trickster. And I, <laughs> the romance there, question mark. Um, so I'm sure you've heard about it, so I won't go on and on about it, but I will say if you liked Caravelle or if you are interested in anything by Stephanie Garber, definitely consider picking up this series. I just flew right through them. 
Now, continuing on with the theme of storytelling, I'm going to go more into some mythology recommendations that I have for you. So the first mythology fantasy I would recommend is Six Crimson Cranes by Elizabeth Lim. I recently read the second book, The Dragon's Promise, and let me tell you, I loved these five out of five stars. Beautiful, beautiful writing. The storytelling had me on the edge of my seat while still seeing very light and ethereal. I think ethereal is the perfect word for this duology and what I look for in a spring mythology book or fantasy book. And this duology definitely captures it. You have your main character, Shiori, who has six brothers and she has this forbidden magic but her stepmother actually finds out about it at her betrothal ceremony she's supposed to marry this one dude who wants to do that and um so as punishment she tells the stepmother tells shorty that she her brothers have turned into cranes and she cannot say anything and so shorty goes to find her brothers and figure out how to break this curse that her stepmother has placed on all of them and like I said just the whole story of it just feels like on another level of magic and beauty and I could just rave about this I've loved all of the mythology books by Elizabeth Lim <sighs> and of course I had to get the UK covers for this duology because I love the pastel colors I think it fits the vibe of the duology much better than the American covers and it does even further elevate the feeling of spring but even just reading the story alone just feels so spring so fresh so new life another good mythology that I would recommend for this is the girl who fell beneath the sea by Axie O oh, this is a Korean mythology standalone so if you're looking for a standalone kind of on the shorter side this might be a really good one to pick up you follow our main character who lives in this village that is being terrorized by the sea almost just kind of with all these natural storms and tsunamis and they believe it is because the sea king is looking for his true bride and so every year they toss a woman overboard and hope that she is the true bride to appease the sea king Except this year it is our main character's brother's love who is supposed to go overboard and she's like I am not gonna let that happen so instead she falls overboard and she discovers that it's not that the sea king is looking for his bride to be appeased he's actually cursed into sleep so she has to kind of wander around this magical watery world trying to figure out how to break this curse in order to save her village. It's just, again, it's enchanting. The writing is very flowery, very watery, very beautiful, and with everything melting outside, I look forward to something like this, where it's just, it's another world, and it's beautiful and ethereal, and the storytelling is amazing. So, if you have not picked this up yet, definitely consider it this spring. All right, I have two more books to recommend to you, and these are just pure magic fantasies that just feel perfect for spring. So the first one is a standalone and that is Wild as the Witch by Rachel Griffin. I read this right when it came out last August and I was reading it and I was going, no, mm -mm, this is not a fall book. This is a spring book. This is hiking in nature where it's just a little bit cool and you're trying to find this owl because our main character casts a spell that she shouldn't have and the owl took it away and so she needs to go and find the owl to get rid of her curse um and she teams up with the boy she absolutely hates and she has to hide the fact that she is a witch from him while trying to find this bird that has her spell i loved this i loved all of rachel griffin's writing so far and her other her first book nature of witches is great for any season because it takes place over the course of a year but this independent beautiful magical story just is a spring story with animals and nature and hiking in the mountains in the pacific northwest the vibes are so strong they're all there and so i believe that this is a great spring book if you're gonna pick up this book anytime pick it up in spring. It will transport you into a beautiful natural spring Pacific Northwest and you'll have a lot of fun. 
reading this one. I cannot wait for Bring Me Your Midnight this year. I just, oh, I cannot wait for that book. Now the final book that I'm going to recommend in this video is super popular. Everyone's been talking about it. Everyone, I think, has been loving it because I certainly loved it. I believe I actually put it on my spring TBR and then immediately read it. And so I want to include it in this recommendations now that I've read it and I know what it's about and everything like that. So that would be Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies by Heather Fawcett. Oh my goodness, you guys, this was a five out of five stars. And there's another book after it. It's a series. I totally thought this was a standalone. That is not the case. It is a series or it's going to be a series. So we follow Emily Wilde, who is this young professor who is gathering all the information that she can about fairies, all kinds of fairies from brownies to courtly fae and everywhere in between and creating the world's first encyclopedia of fairies. And so to do so, we follow her as she travels to a very like Slavic Nordic inspired country to study their hidden ones, their courtly fae that nobody really knows anything about. And so the reason I think this is a great spring book is so the book is actually set right before the big winter freeze. So you would think it would be a fall book, but there was so many descriptions of this book of like grass poking out of the snow and like little bits of nature and very natural scenes that were green and lush. And that's just not something I picture when I picture autumn because that's when the leaves are turning and dying and everything is getting ready for the death of winter. But in this book, it was it was greenery and it was life poking through, even though they're about to go through a big winter storm. So I think it's perfect to read, especially at the beginning of spring, if you get snow where you live, like I do. This is the perfect book to read there. So she goes to this country and she is trying to learn what she can about all the fae there. And then, gosh darn Bramblebee, Bramblebee, one of her fellow professors who is her academic rival. He's the one with like all the prestige, but is not nearly as hardworking as she is. He surprises her and he's like, yo, I'm here to help. And she's like, oh God, no. And she, she like makes friends with this adorable little nature fairy and it is the cutest thing. So this book is just wholesome and beautiful all the way around. Of course, there's a romance, but like I said, just with like, the creation of nature and the fairies and the very strong fairy vibes in this book makes it perfect to pick up right now. But I cannot wait till the next book. Oh my word, I cannot believe we have to wait so long for it. So those are all of my spring recommendations. Let me know if you have read any of these and if you agree or if you have any recommendations for me to read this spring. I'm always looking for more books to read. So feel free to comment those down below. While you're down there, feel free to hit the subscribe button. I post videos on Sundays and Wednesdays, hopefully, and hit the bell to be notified for when I do post these videos. I also have bookish social media linked down below in the description so you can follow me there. I am really getting back into a groove with Instagram, which has been really fun and really exciting for me. So if you wanna follow me on my Instagram, I have the link down below so you can do so. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. I'm really excited for spring. Spring is also the season of my birthday, which is always super fun and super nice for me, but yeah that is everything so until i see you all in the next video i wish you happy spring and happy reading